<laughs> Welcome back, Random TV Reviews, your girl with that. And your boy, Stanley. All right, back again for Have and Have Not. Hey. Let me go ahead and do the, um, the YouTube thing. If you are not a subscriber, go ahead and consider hitting that subscribe button. It's free this week. It will go up very, very soon. Yeah. I don't have a date, but I will jack the price up. Um, go ahead and hit your bell. Your bell will let you know. Make sure it's pushed all the way in. Yeah. It'll let you know when we drop a new exclusive. Go ahead and rate the video. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Doesn't even matter. You're yeah, already it's here. All You've good. already been counted. But let me go ahead and say this because word on the curb is that this was kind of like a break in the season. And then yeah. it's going to come back. And it's going to go like a whole nother freaking season again. Like it's a two-in-one album. Yes. I if that's the case... This going to be the last. That's what we say. <laughs> Usually when I say it's the last, it's the last. Y'all saw how quickly I dropped if love of you is wrong. Woo. Because, listen. Can I run it with y'all real quick? Just like run family it. do? Run it. Being in this relationship with Tyler is like being in a really bad, like, relationship relationship have it's you ever a, been in a relationship it's a freaking roller coaster man you that was go it. up and down up and like down. have you ever been in a relationship where the love is still there and you love the person but they don't did so much skit that even when they show improvement you don't give a buck yeah because they like, don't okay. do so much skit you just waiting for them to buck up around the corner because exactly. you know what's coming exactly. this is my relationship with tyler perry right now like i see that he has improved he's doing his thing he's been faithful to me you know he's been checking in he's been calling he leave his money on the dresser, everything. But I'm waiting for him to buck up. <laughs> and I don't even know if I'm going to put my heart in it no more. And see, the thing about it, you ain't waiting on the buck up. You know <laughs> he's going to buck up. <laughs> and I'm going to be cussing him out again. Exactly. Slashing his tiles again. Uh -huh. Jumping out of trees again. Huh? Doing all of that and taking and, them to and court. And then he's going to come back through and he's going to smooth you over. Yeah. He's going to start feeling good again. You're going to be on top of the world. And then he's going to drop you off the building again. Yep. And all my family are going to be mad and I'm going to take him back. And I'm not doing it no more. That's why Death Do Us Part was the name of this episode, man. Okay. We picked up where we left off last week where Oscar fell out the window. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Oscar is out the window, dead to the ground, he went. So now Candace comes out of the room. She goes back into her hotel room and she's, well, I don't even know if she saw RK at first, but RK actually followed Candace into her room. It was like, what's the deal? You yeah, know, he kind of looking at her like, what's wrong with you? You know, something is off. What's yeah. going on? Well, she quickly let RK know, listen, Oscar did. Yeah. I pushed, like, I pushed him out the window. He said, well, what? You, you did what? Did he deserve? Why you deserve to push out the window? So she quickly went into, he stole $4 million from me. Um, Yeah, I think he deserved to lose his life over it. So I took mine back plus interest. We got a little, got in a little scuffle and I pushed him out the window. He did, but I'm going to need your help. He was like, okay, what you want me to do? I need you to write his suicide note. First thing that came to my mind was, say what now? Yeah. Say what now? And then she said, don't put your fingerprints on it. And what he do? And and the paper is just like this. Okay, how how is that even possible? Yeah. You, it was common sense. You pick the pad up with your hand like this. And you got it right. And you write it like this. Just like that. And then you go to the room and you find you some gloves. Preferably those gloves you put your perm in your head with. <laughs> the big, big old gloves. And then you tear the paper off and put it on the bed and get out of dodge. So RK went ahead and he he wrote the suicide note. But she's feeding to him every word that needs to go in this um this suicide note. And I'm sitting here like, okay, in a real world, would the recipient of that letter be able to tell that that is not the tone in which Oscar speaks? Now, I know mm. Candace was with Oscar for a good little minute and a half. But not long enough to know that. But not enough to know what he would say in a letter, yeah. what he wouldn't say. The tone in which he would say it and the words that he would choose to say it in. Yeah. So, I'm sitting here like, okay, this is not going to fly over. RK was like, are you sure I'm not writing my own suicide note? I said, yeah. okay. <laughs> now I he's starting to talk. Now, I would think the same thing. So, RK, he see that Candace is in a real vulnerable position. And what he want to do, he want to put her in another vulnerable position. He still, still want to try to get some. He like taking them suspenders off, y'all. So he, he was, she was like, boy, if you don't go somewhere and sit all the way Put down. Put them suspended back going and go take that note on over there. 
and you need to start you need to get back to work oh he he got this on lock he got something on his ball supervise somebody yeah he don't really have to work like that but the first thing then the second thing i thought about i said you know what he said that he has the master key card. He's about to go back in Oscar's room and put the freaking suicide note in there. You don't think that all of this is going to come into play with an investigation? Yeah, because they're going to they gonna find out who card the swiped into that room. And then, thirdly... Oh, so could it have been Candace was setting, setting him up? up. Yeah, setting That's him up. That's what I'm thinking. Oh, man. He was too dumb to realize it. And I bet you... What's going to happen is that, hey, Tyler, don't steal my skit without Go ahead now. Talk it through. Candace already got beat up by Oscar in the elevator. That's right. There was at least two witnesses That's that right. saw him dragging her uh, exactly. into his room. Exactly. She come out the room looking disheveled. Mm-hmm. Then RK goes in the room, and the next thing we know, we got a dead Oscar. Could it be, like you said, she set him up to take the fall because he came in to rescue her and to take care of the person that beat her up. Uh, I don't know. And on top of me. that, we got the hotel cameras too, because putting us in hotels, they got cameras on the hallways to see what's going on. Every time. So, so like you said, they're going to see them cameras. They're going to see him dragging her through there. They're going to see her coming out the room. And then they're going to see RK go going into the, the room. room and then there's a small window of time. Yep. So RK might be taking a fall for this one. Yeah. So then down in the hotel lobby, you got, um, cause you know, Justin's the only police officer that works these days, you know, <laughs> he's down there and you know, he's investigating, you know, the whole Oscar. No, he's down there I, stalking. Well, that's that what he's doing. Jim comes downstairs and this is what threw me all the way off. We left off last episode where basically Jim, was using this whole Gia is an informant thing to his advantage to just basically force her to have sex with him however he want, whenever he want, kind of like yeah. how he does Sarah. And she wasn't with the skit. Mm -hmm. But then this time they come down the stairs like they a like, happy freaking yeah, couple. Yeah, like they good, man. And like, honey, I'll see you at the house a little later on. Yeah, we good. What? <laughs> what happened in that room? Because I, I, I ta see Tyler, this deep relationship yeah. that I'm talking about right here. Yeah, because she looked good to me. She looked, yeah, she, was she fine. looked like she was fine. And she, whatever they did, they had a good time doing like she it. She went and did a job and got paid a couple, a couple grand. And she was good to go. So, Jim goes over there to talk to Justin. Asking him different questions. Of course, Justin at first was like, Jim had to quickly remind him. We got history. Yeah. It's in your best interest that you just go ahead and let me know what I need to know. Okay, this guy named Oscar. He jumped out of the window. And Jim, hey, Jim. What? what? Oh, do you know Oscar? No. <laughs> no. You have a fun way of showing it, because you know every time Jim knows something, when you tell Jim something he don't want to hear, what? <laughs> like, can you freaking hear? <laughs> so then we see Gia go over in the cut, and she calls D.A. George. Told George, hey, he's open. He's loosened up. Now I can wear that wire. So I'm sitting here oh, like, all what? kinds of confused. So I'm now... I told Stella, I said, well, hold on. Is this whole informant thing of, okay, Jim knows that she's an informant. Now, is that a part of the play? Yeah. Like, but is he really she... falling into his hands? But I'm like, she said he trusts me. I go, well, why? So every time y'all come in the presence, he going to check you for a while. And y'all always naked. Yeah. So how are you going to do that? I'm so confused. Unless you're going to put that wire in your butthole. Seriously? <laughs> Where the hell did that come from? <laughs> In Tyler's world, that makes sense. <laughs> In our world, it's booze kit. You reach for that one, but all right. <laughs> so, while George is talking to um, Gia on the phone about that, of course, Sarah gets the information as well. George is actually on his way to the Artesian Hotel because, you know, they got to come on the scene. And Sarah... Quickly calls Jim and told Jim, hey, be careful. Mm -hmm. Next time you wear her, she's going to be wearing a wire. Got to go. Ah, da, da. So, okay. Now, Jim has that information. I said, okay. Where are we freaking going with this? Now, back at the Artesia Hotel, before, before Jim actually walked out of Justin Timberlake's presence, Justin caught a quick glimpse 
of Jeffrey, it's too many J's in here, <laughs> of Jeffrey getting into the elevator. Now, Jeffrey never I saw said, him. here we go. I said, you was a black man in 2018 and you don't know your surroundings? Hmm. And you already got a stalker on your hands? When I had a stalker on my hands, but you, but you I got, But you got to remember, he was at the bar with RK taking about 10 or 15 shots of that tequila. <laughs> uh -huh. So he went all the way there, see? So what Justin dis decided to do, well, not what he decided to do, he did what anybody, what a stalker would do. He watched to see what floor he would get off on. He... So once he knew what floor he got off on, this fool goes up to the floor and calls um, Jeffrey on the telephone. Now he's doing a, <laughs> he's doing the uh, family locator manual style yeah. on Verizon's plan and going around, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah look at uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Trying to find the voice that's coming from the phone, yeah. so that he can know what room that Je um, Jeffrey is in. So Jeffrey ended up actually hanging up on him. He called him back, trying to see if he could hear. I said, Jeffrey, please have your phone on vibrate, so he can't hear it ring. Yeah. Well, he didn't even need to do that because R.K. Because y'all remember last episode, R.K. told him, said, "Hey." I know what room number you in because you're going to charge these drinks to your room and I'm going to come up and see you a little mm -hmm. later on. So now he's coming to collect because, you know, he acting like he's gay, but he just won't. He won't get watch. watch. So RK comes up with the bottle. You know, he goes up and he goes into the room. Jeffrey went ahead and let him in. Justin is peeping all of this mm -hmm. out. Justin let them be in that room for probably about a half a second before he boom, 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 boom. Okay. He put a curveball into RK's player. And this is the only time that I will give Justin credit yeah. for coming through in a clutch. Okay. The only time. The only time. I'll let that, no credit for him. No credit. Okay. That day when Justin Timberlake notices RK right off the bat. Yep. He said, aren't you the guy that I arrested and took to jail? Oh, is that where y'all knew each other from? Y'all exchanged numbers in the celly? Okay, but you're the guy that I arrested because you're going around uh -huh. scamming these men acting like you're gay and sticking them up and taking them for what they got you got a rap sheet as long as um as long as my arm so no so jeffrey's in the cut looking like huh hella offensive like or hella offended like yeah you really tried to play me like that <laughs> yeah he tried to play you like that and then justin was like you know ahead go ahead and get on no why is this bed messed up like, like this, this? And why are your suspenders down? down? Where y'all in here do? <laughs> there you go. He go started on that bush skit. So next day we know, he told, ooh, 10,000 steps sitting here. Hey. Whatever fit bit. <laughs> so he told RK, you know what? Leave that bottle in here. Cause I'm going to take that to the lab and I'm going to test it. And if yeah. there's anything in there, I'm going to come back and I'm going to get you and I'm going to file charges on you. I'm going to arrest you. And the look uh, that RK had on his face let you know that he was about to drug the hell mm -hmm. out of Jeffrey. Hopefully he had the drugs in his pocket and not in the bottle. But uh, at the same time, if, you, if, if it's in the bottle, when you come back and lock him up, lock yourself up because ain't no two different about y'all. Ain't nothing different. Mm -mm. Both of y'all doing the same thing. Cause ain't you walking around here with a freaking um vial of um heroin in your guy doing on um, pocket, right? Uh -huh. pocket, huh? That you tried to just you tried to inject why it went and after and a while, why you wanted it. Yeah. It's, it's just too much. Too much, make it go away. Lord. I'm trying to figure out how in the world that Justin still got his job after Veronica bought that tape up to the courthouse. Yeah. Yeah. How you still got your job? So, or why you ain't on suspension? For real. So RK ended up with going ahead and getting on out the door. And of course, Justin was like, okay, now that he's gone, Jeffrey was like, what is it going to take for you to, for you to leave, leave me, alone? me alone? Your death. Your death. Jeffrey said, what Jeffrey did said, I, I tried tell, to tell you, you about these threats? By talking to me like that. He said, no, 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 I meant. And so death, death did was part. part. Say, hey, we're going to that bus get. Did you read what he said? Did you understand what he said? Yeah, death. It's still in the whether it's death is dead. Yeah, yeah, death is in in both sentences. So whether that you here and he here or just or neither one of y'all here, you gonna be the one dead at yeah. the end of the day. So the only one that can talk to you about death to us part is the preacher when you're at the altar getting married. <laughs> Anybody else coming to you with some bullshit and talking about death? They you better take yeah. They gonna try to kill. <laughs> God darn it! I said this is just too god darn much. So now that um. 
Where do I want to go with this? Okay, David and Erica, they're over at the house. David and love, boy. Okay, I got, I got, <laughs> See, this is Tyler right here. This is Tyler in this bullshit. Um, he done went out and got this ugly, mm -hmm. ugly furniture and they'll put it up in the house. What good to show you the Veronica was decorated? Now, let's go ahead and, and make one <laughs> thing clear. <laughs> Didn't we just have a, a scene where Justin tore up all the skit over there in the condo? Mm -hmm. $6,000 couches there. And then he went and got that one out of the thrift store. But you went down there to the diversity thrift and got this. Erica was like, she didn't say this, but she was like, what kind of bullshit furniture is this? We gotta, we gotta get rid of all this right here. I said, so did he take all this money and furnish the <clears throat> condo again? And just had to go to the yard sale and get this? And, and see, he was real smooth about it. See, see, I probably would have been offended. Because if I went out and picked the stuff up and I decorated, I would have been proud of my work. I'm pretty sure he was proud of his work. And then she came and shot it right down. But not David. He a love boy. He said, uh, we can go ahead and take it on back down to the stove and we can go and exchange it out. He said, we can, you can get in a cab and do that. Yeah. And then she said, no, she said she going to get in the cab. He said, no, I got something better. Got something better than money. Yeah. Come on with me real quick. So, goes out and shows her that he don't bought her a goddamn BMW. BMW. God don't. She just as excited as she could be. I said, okay, Erica. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and come through. Say, so you doing something right. Y'all, is Erica pregnant in real life? She's showing up looking like either. Like either, she's either. not big, but everything about her is changing. E so I'm like, is Erica pregnant? Either, either she's pregnant or doing the breaks. Doing when they shooting this, she eating a whole lot of peas or something. No, it's not Ice like cream. she's like, she's not fat or anything. But no, she's not fat, but she's starting to gain weight. Yeah, like her facial away. features are changing and everything. Like a pregnant woman. So I was like, is she pregnant or what? And I follow her on Twitter, but I haven't seen anything. So hmm. I was just wondering. Or pregnant zone. Okay. So now that we've seen the car and all of this, we get Jim. Jim pulls up. Erica's kind Erica of stalling. Erica's nervous. Because yeah. I was like, is Demonica coming or not? Well, it's not Demonica this time. It's Jim. Jim is being his nasty, freaky, mm -hmm. deacon self. All up in Erica's tail. That was a mm, 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 mm. David. And David was like, you know, I just wanted to make That's sure. That's enough. You know, I just wanted to make sure that I, you know, that um, she going to be the one before I introduce her to all my peoples. And, you know, they started talking about crazies and all this. And Jim was like, my best friend would never be with someone that's crazy. I said, huh. you know what? And what? Erica's looking like, well, do I know? <laughs> I know all too well about the crazy. <laughs> okay. So Jim was like, you know what? I need to talk to you, David. Um, Benny Young got my money and Oscar is dead. What's up with these people that you, you keep bringing into them? my life? And David was like, like No, Dave was throwing back and said he committed suicide. He was like, Yeah, no, he said, No, no, that ain't that ain't that ain't Oscar. Oscar ain't commit no suicide. He ain't that kind of person. Yeah, he ain't that and kind of person. Hold on, pause, David. What kind of person commits suicide though? Yeah. We there is no face to suicide. No. Anybody can do it. Yeah. So I was like There's no making model for suicide. No. He ain't the kind of person that Okay, David, I'ma let you run because it's Tyler Perry. I'ma let, yeah. I'm let you have that one. But he said, Yeah, I know that Benny is in jail. So Jim kinda did what I would have did. How the buck would you know that? Yeah. He was like, Oh, you know, ever since he was screwing my wife, I've I been have, tracking I've him. been tracking his hard part. So <laughs> you know, he down there at the FEMA jail. They got the um the upgrade because you know them loans came through. Yeah. But you know, I could probably pull some strings and get you in there if you, that's what you want to do. You no, know, Jim asked to get in there. And he said, you know what, I could go ahead and take care of that. Next thing we know, because you know, now he's gonna have to throw Erica off. He can't go shop with her now. See, I am gonna steal this from Dave because every time the Jim asked Dave something, he said, Yeah, yeah. Yeah, when somebody asked me something, yeah. <laughs> hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, Stanley, you wanna go here? Yeah. yeah. You want some of this popcorn right here? Yeah. You know what? I can do with you. <laughs> you want some of this pizza right here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the next thing we know, we back down there at the jail. Hannah's down there because she's trying to get her son out. He hasn't been there yet. Like, they're en route. I said, so well, he's still in the squad car. We're like, what's taking him so long? I said, is this a Dylan Roof? Did they take him to freaking um, Burger King before they brought him? <laughs> well, no, they ain't going to take him to Burger King. They're nah. going to take him to McDonald's. Yeah. So that's some hood skit. Yeah. 
So, hadn't got there yet. Catherine was able to come back in there because y'all know last week we were trying to figure out. I didn't touch on it because I was like, Why is Catherine there? What did Catherine do? Yeah. And she, I, to be honest, I really thought that Catherine was going to be one of the people that like committed suicide. The way she looked last week, mm -hmm. it looked like she was at her wit's end. She was going to turn she don't look, in. She is at her wit's end. And I thought she was going to do something to herself. Well, we're not ruling that out. But hmm. what she did was she told them everything Turn about Wyatt. Wyatt. God don't tell him. I said, That's thank you. It's about time. It's about time. So she told Hannah, she said, I know that your son is about to come down here, but don't worry. I got Marty. He's about to come down here. Once he gets processed, he's coming right back out because I told them that Wyatt did it. I know that he did it. So now Hannah's like, hold on, wait a minute. I have a question. What? They create. They pretty much created Wyatt to be the son that he is right now. He's spoiled. He's been covered. They wasn't in his life like that. They sent him away to that little thing. He got raped. Uh, he got on drugs to cope with it. Now, because he won't do what they say do, and he got his inheritance money, now he's too much because he won't let them control him no more. Now it's time for you to pay the price. But I, you was the one that created him to be the son that he is. Now he need to pay the price for it. Do you think that's wrong? I don't think it's wrong. Because at some point in your life, you have to take responsibility for the skit that you did. I knew you were going to say that. So at the same <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. So at the same time, she should have turned him in, herself in, Jim in, David in, and Veronica. Because all of them. Hold on. But who's to say she did? Because the oh! next thing, the next thing that I'm going to talk about is oh! there's no way in the world that she turned Wyatt in without turning Jim in. Oh! And then when Jim gets turned in, he's going to come down. And so he, she may not have directly said all of that. Oh! Because I was like, how are you going to turn him in when you created him that way and didn't turn yourself in because you was the one dead? All of them about to go down. Yeah. All of them, because as soon as Wyatt go in, Jim's going in. When Jim go in, Catherine's going in. And when Catherine go in, you know she's going to drag the Because you know Wyatt's going to tell everything he knows. Wyatt done told a lot already to what well, he told it to Jennifer Salison. That's, that's Salisbury it, State. Yeah, Salisbury State just wrapped up in the loom of fall. But, uh, <laughs> so she can't, you know, tell us what happened to, you know, when in court. She can't tell you what, what the story was. But Wyatt going to tell it again. And it is. He going to tell George. And George wants to take him now. He can't wait. Oh, he itching. He just like um mop mm -hmm. on um power. Exactly. So Hannah, she did like I did. She looked at um Catherine and was like, hold on, wait a minute. What? Mm -hmm. How long have you known this? that your son had did this while you skinning and grinning in my face? Mm -hmm. So it took her all the way back from when they hit her son. You hearing me talk about and seeing me crying about my son being hit by this person that we don't know hit him. Yeah. And you know all the while that your son did it. And you grinned in my face and you didn't say a god darn thing. So well, that she, took her all the way back there. Yeah, well she didn't know though. But this time, Catherine told her, you know what, this is not like the last time. Yeah. As soon as you told me the story, I was able to figure out that the person that my son had harmed was the person that your son was being accused of harming. Mm -hmm. And I knew that I had to do something. Yeah. I turned my son in. But then she told, she turned into a mother real quick. And she told Hannah, but it hurts. Yeah. She said, I can't breathe. I'm heavy. This is, this, this is yeah. not a feeling I that I like. I thought she was ready to have a panic attack right there. So Hannah was able to talk to her from the standpoint of, I I've didn't, been there. I didn't buy it because you don't have the affection towards Candace that she yeah, has towards Wyatt. Wyatt. No. So it's really not the same, but it mm -hmm. kind of is the same. Yeah. She told her, said, no child. I had to do that when it came to Candace. So I know exactly what you're going through. Now, I'm not saying that Hannah does not love Candace, but she doesn't have that same affection. Mm -hmm. That She she have a funny way of showing it. She don't. does. <laughs> so, she, you know, she told her, that basically, I will see you later. We're going to work this thing. You know, we're going to work this thing out. But in the meantime, I need to go, you know, wait to see my son and, you know, da 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 da. But over there in the interrogation room, Jim Cryer walks up in the room acting as if he's Benny's lawyer. And we all know, like Lady Nika say, Benny is a big pretty mall, but ain't nobody in that shop. <laughs> um, real slow, real. So he's in there, and Jim is able to basically finesse him. It's basically kind of admitting to stuff that he didn't do. 
Yeah. Told him, said, I know what you did. The Malones are going to come after you. They're going to do this. They're going to do that. And you have $9 million of my money in uh -huh. your account. And if you want to see the light of day, you're going to do this. <laughs> he ain't even had to go no further. Cause, and I said, thank you. Because Benny was about to make a plea deal with you. Yeah. <laughs> over some skin that he didn't do. <laughs> and I'm sitting here like, Benny. Shut your god door mouth. I said, I'm so glad that Catherine and Marty walked in that god door. No, table. Hannah and Marty. Yeah, Hannah and Marty, yeah. So Hannah walks in the door. She was like, ah, what the hell's going on in here? What y'all talking about? And I was kind of mad that Marty ain't coming in and take control of the situation. Like, Jim, what you doing in here? Because I came here to talk to him, and I'm his lawyer. So what, so what you doing, you doing here? here? Yeah. But he ain't saying that to him because you know it's a big rich yeah, town. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> and I just came from the poorest part. <laughs> so... Um, Hannah, you know, she sized and Jim up was like, okay, what are you doing? What's going on? He said, we in here having a coming to Jesus moment. Yeah, we having a conversation. I said, Jim, you, this ain't the time to be playing and these she, kind she of games. She knew he was in there for some, she knew exactly what he was in there doing. Uh-huh. So then Marty said, you know what? I come to get Benny Young because he's, he's free, free to go. go. So Jim, Hannah looked at him. Jim, what? And it was, what? <laughs> and he said it loud and clear. He's free to go. So here come Hannah. That was a coming to Jesus, Jesus moment. moment. Hallelujah. <laughs> and Benny, you gonna tell me what he said? And Benny was like, "Don't even worry about it. Don't, don't even worry about it. This is one time I'm on Hannah's side about this. You go tell me." Yeah, cause I'm going. involved now. Cause my name is on this right here. Take your my name off of it, Hannah. Since you you don't want them kind of problems. Huh. Just take your name. Just transfer the money over to his single account. I know it's yeah. probably just a savings uh -huh. account. And get your name off of it. You know, that's what you want to do. So, um, but the whole time I was, I was sitting there laughing at Jim when he talked about Tom, and the Malones are going to come and do this to you. And I said, uh-uh, they're coming to do it to you. Because Catherine told them what well, Catherine told the police who done did what. Yep. And they're going to find out that it's your son. Your whole family about to die. And you got to realize, they ain't in good with the Malones right now. And that's what I said. Mama yeah. Malone already pissed. He pissed. She pissed from the previous incident that, that they went through. Now your son don't, don't try to... So, Vinny would be Malone's sister, right? I mean, brother, right? Yeah. So, you tried to kill old lady's um, brother? Huh? And left him for dead? Your son did that. See and this, you helped clean it up. See, this time, they going to they gonna kill you, Jim. <laughs> They gonna kill Catherine, and they gonna kill Wyatt, and they're gonna wrap all of y'all up in Loom Falls <laughs> and throw y'all out in front of the police station. <laughs> Toes pointed up like this. I said, I can't even. So, um, hey, um, Catherine goes over there to talk to Wyatt. Because she had told Hannah, she said, you know, I need to go over there and tell Wyatt what I did. Blah, 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 blah. So she goes in the cell, and Wyatt just as nasty and cocky as he can be. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what? I really hate you and my dad. I and hate everything about y'all. I can't stand Wyatt, but he was in his own right, though. All the skit that they put him through to try to control him. Yeah. But, playing devil's advocate, uh -huh. they only tried to control him to protect him from the drugs. Yeah. They tried but, to protect him from himself. But, they was the ones that put him in a circumstance to push him that way. Now they weren't now they weren't responsible for him taking the hit of the drugs, but they were responsible because they didn't really deal with the priest thing correctly. Hmm. So I don't because we we see that they didn't kill the priest because the priest walked by him and he just he just went into a panic attack. No, he they did kill that priest. Did that he, was the other that's priest. Another I thought priest? about it. Yeah, remember when they had the whole shootout thing and there was bodies hitting the ground? Oh, yeah, that's right. That, that priest was killed, but like we, the other priest was a trigger. But like on power, they said it don't make no difference. Him and the dead bodies going to ground, that's yeah, not going to bring right. healing to Wyatt or what happened to him when he was at camp. So they never really officially put him in any in counseling. They kill a priest, come back home, you good See to go. Priest. So he's still dealing with it. But... Okay, but Wyatt, we ain't, we ain't come to work out Wyatt's problems because he about to go to jail. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so he being disrespectful. Disrespectful. So Wyatt, um, you know, basically runs Catherine down, tells Catherine, you sucked as a parent. All you did was send me to this place. You sent me to camps. You sent me to this. 
activity center, after school programs, da 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 da. da. And I'm sitting there like, I'm not trying to be funny, but that was like most kids dream was for their parents to be able to afford them to do those opportunities band count stuff like that but in Wyatt's defense they went to all of these places and got violated so yeah your viewpoint on these places yeah. is way different than somebody that had a great experience then i was am saying that pretty much i wanted to spend time with y'all but every time y'all get y'all sent us somewhere so yeah. you had to deal with us well them rich people problems sometimes too. yeah which that's a lesson within itself too they, they don't want in, all your stuff they want in the big, that happens in the big rich town and it, ha it happened in the poor town too yeah go on. yeah because in the poor town they dropped the kids off oh, at vacation grandma. bible school <laughs> mm -hmm. i know some of y'all watching did that you ain't want to pull them kids for about a couple weeks and go on dropping off at vacation bible school they so there the right now so the church yep so the church can deal with them for a little while. so you can get you some rest because oh, yeah. they ain't eating you out of house for all summer long <laughs> They had vacation for Bible school right now. Yep. So, yeah. So he's running her down. And Catherine, you could tell she was taking the hits. Uh -huh. She was taking them. And then she bossed up. She said, you know what, Wyatt? I may be a whole lot of things. But I was a good mother to you. I was there when the priest messed with you and you were crying all night. I was here when this happened. I was there when you hit that little girl and we tried to cover up your tracks. We were the ones that every time you check yourself out of rehab, we got you, tried to put you on a, on a straight and narrow. We were there. I was the one who held you and rocked you in my arms when nothing else would go right in your life. So don't, basically, don't you dare try to tell me that I didn't try. I've got my flaws and I, I have mm -hmm. messed up. But what you're not going to do is act like I wasn't a parent. I said, well, hold on, Catherine. You got to act like a little crackhead right now. Yeah. And you know them crackheads do that. Uh-huh. But it, I ain't going to say, come on, on. Say, come on through with your motivational speech. Uh -huh. <laughs> and why I didn't buy it. Because uh -huh. he was a motivational speaker himself. And he said, but you know what? <laughs> <laughs> he, said, he said, that was a good try. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. And he said, you know why none of that matters? Because you the biggest devil that I, I know. know. <laughs> And she look kind of like, true. <laughs> but in this moment, we're not hearing all that. You know what? I'm sorry, Wyatt. And next thing we know, the people came there to get him. Wyatt's whole face was like, well, 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 what it's is It's almost this? like somebody that always, they threaten you, threaten you, yeah, threaten uh -huh. you. And then when you come through, they're like, I can't believe uh -huh. it. Well, she told you she was going to do it. She told you she did it. This wasn't a threat this time. It was a goddamn promise. promise. So, um, Hannah gets home. And she's still trying to ask Benny. You need to tell me what Jim was talking about. What happened? What was going on? Don't worry about it, mama. I need to go see Candace. Don't worry about it. I'll go see Candace. Don't worry about it. I need to go see Candace. But mama, can I drive your car? <laughs> that, that ain't some goddamn buck skit. Yup. <laughs> buck boy skit. I was gonna say the whole word. Ooh. And, and here she is. And... Mamas that coddle their sons mm -hmm. here, here, take the keys. No, no, no. He would have caught the GRTC, which is the city transit here. He would have caught that, and he would have found his way all the way down there on um, on line one. Well, well, technically that ain't Hannah Car anyway. It is Hannah Car. I mean, Catherine when they gave it to her, so she ain't worked for it either. Well, it don't matter. It's her. She got. But I'm just, playing, I'm just playing devil's advocate I know. on both sides. I know. <laughs> but here come Hannah. How you gonna give him the keys to your guy doing um to the car and don't take your house key off? So now she locked out. Uh -huh. Thank God Melissa's dead. I forgot Melissa was even there. I forgot all about her. That guy doing Demonica pulls up. And um she being Demonica, mm -hmm. she don't trace um Melissa's phone to the address. She couldn't believe that Hannah lived there. She was like, oh, moving on up. Oh, I have a warrant. Not a warrant, um, a subpoena. A subpoena. We need to do a wellness check on Melissa. Not now, nah. Melissa, come on out here. Hannah told Melissa, ain't nothing wrong with um, Melissa. What's wrong oh, with her is, is you. So, <laughs> Hannah's like, oh, do you have a warrant, though? She said, I have this. It said, Melissa. <laughs> I said, is she going it to the first kid again? a wellness. And the, <laughs> back, the thing that pissed me off was Hannah was looking like. <laughs> and I said, why are you playing into this? So, I would have smacked they got no paper out of hand like, get out here with that bush kid. So, Melissa was like, you know what? I'm not doing it. I can't do it with her no more. And she slammed the door and locked everybody back out again. Next thing we know, we heard Melissa up on the on the top of the, on the roof. Yep. I can't take it anymore. 
And they was like, Melissa, no, 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 no. Melissa jumped. jumped. I, I said, what God doing? I wasn't, I knew it I was going to happen, but I, I wasn't, wasn't ready. ready. I wasn't ready, yeah. Okay, so that's a body that hit the floor. So then over there at David's house, he back now. It's time to go shopping. Let's go to Ikea and pick out some good stuff. Some stuff that we put together ourselves. Stuff that don't come together, put together already. So Erica's like, cool, da, 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 da. Now, David being the Southern gentleman that he is, he opens the door for Erica to get into the car. She gets in the car and he's on his way to walk around to the passenger side. But she goes ahead and cranks that car because y'all remember the guy uh -huh. had already called and told to Monica, look, he bought her a new car. She said, light everything. Light everything up. Let that light be it up. what you do. She said, let that body hit the floor. Next thing we know, <laughs> but ooh. David went flying. David was sliding across the lawn. So David, all right. But that got done, Erica, you dead. Yeah, I think she gone. Unless Tyler decided to resurrect, be resurrect her resurrect. Mm -hmm. Everybody seemed to get resurrected. The Wyatt was dead a whole season. Bennett was almost dead a half a season. Yep. The only person that he didn't bring back that he's supposed to have brought back with Lil Quincy, he could have brought him back. Yeah, that's the one you should have resurrected. So we gonna say that um, Erica's dead. But we, but gonna, we, we just gonna, never we find out when uh, when it comes back on. I think it comes back on sometime next month. But uh, so we, we might we'll, see y'all. We'll, if y'all don't, yeah, we, yeah. it's been a good run straight from the VA. The dirty, dirty south to uh, to town. Holla. Holla.